Hello, welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, software engineer and entrepreneur, and in this video we'll be learning about effects in Xamarin Forms. Now, as we know, Xamarin Forms allows us to write not just our business logic, but also our user interface, our visual elements, by writing the code once in C Sharp in a very cross-platform way. Now, the Xamarin Forms API exposes a relatively limited amount of visual controls and their properties. Whenever we want some extra customization or be or access the platform specific properties of a, of a control, then that's where effects come in. That's why we, we would use an effect. An effect allows us to customize a property or properties of a native control within Xamarin Forms. So it's very, very powerful. So let's go ahead and go, let's go right into it. For this bit, and in this example, we are going to have a button and we want to add a shadow to that button. Now in Xamarin Forms, we can do it directly. We don't have access to those properties, but we can create an effect and those and in that and within that effect we can do it in a platform specific way. So here I have already created an effects folder in our shared uh, uh, project here in our portable class library uh, project here in Xamarin Forms. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new file and I'm going to create a class and we are going to call this shadow effect go and here this class needs to derive from rooting effect and this let's bring in the namespace which is in the Xamarin forms namespace here and here we need to derive from the base constructor here and here we are going to add a string signature and we are going to call it test app which is the name of our of our app of our project and then here we are going to call it uh, shadow effect. So this is just a string identifier. This is the resolution group name, which we'll see in a moment. This is just the name of the effect. So we'll leave this um, for now here. And here in our effect, I want to add properties uh, for this effect. So for example, where is it going to be located relative to the button to our control? So we're going ahead and add those properties here, which I already had ready. So we have a radius for our shadow, for the shadow itself, which is, is the effect. We have a color so what color is that shadow and distance x distance y so relative to the to the control to the to the button where is it going to be located so we have these properties and the reason we do them here in Xamarin forms in our shadow effect class is because whenever we assign this effect to our button here which we're going to do in XAML here for our button we can set these properties assign values to these properties in Xamarin forms and then they will be converted to the and to the appropriate uh, platform platforms and being iOS or Android and we just set them one so it's a it's just a convenience but we can we have a lot of flexibility here so we have our shadow effect in Xamarin forms in our PCL so now we need to add it to our add the effect and implement it in our specific project so we're going to, going to go to iOS first and we're going to create a new class and we are going to call this button shadow effect here and here, this class needs to derive from platform effect. Now, this platform effect, in this case, because we're in iOS, it's it's specific to iOS, so we'll bring in the Xamarin Forms platform iOS namespace uh, here. And we need to just implement um, uh, virtual methods here. So we have our overrides. So these are the two most important methods that to override when creating an effect. So we have the unattached override and the undetached override. So unattached override is going to be called when this effect is first attached or first uh, added to our button, to, to, the, to the specific uh, uh, visual element that we want to add it to. And undetached override is going to be called whenever we want to, whenever that effect is removed um, from, from that visual element. So the, and undetached is where you would perform some cleanup or re release resources or something, you know, just some kind of a general cleanup here. And for this video, we will not be using it. So we'll only be working on, on the unattached. Um, override here and here is where we actually perform our customization where we actually in, in our case our shadow here's where we are going to do the platform specific in this case iOS um, logic or code here to access that to set that shadow so I already have it here to save a little bit of time and I'm gonna go ahead and grab it from this file so I'm unattached here and here we have our shadow customization 
Well, first of all, let's actually bring in the Xamarin Forms nam namespace. So we have an element property here that is our, our Xamarin Forms element. So the element that this effect is attached to, and we, as we know, it's a button because we want to attach a shadow to a button. So we grab the property, which is a general element, so we need to cast it to a button. And now here we're going to check if it's null, just to be good developers, good citizens. So And if it's null, just you know return. And if it's not, then we are going to start our platform-specific customization for our shadow. So we have our shadow effect, which is Xamarin for, uh, and our effects uh, um, folder here in Xamarin Forms. So we'll go ahead and bring in the namespace. And we have link here to um, to access uh, to work with collections here. Our Xam our button here has an effects collection, and we're going to go ahead and grab the first. There's only one effect in the effects collection, and we'll add it in just a moment. And we're just going to go ahead and grab it and, and cast it to a shadow effect. We're going to say this is specifically a shadow effect here. And we store it in a local variable. And now again, we check if it's not null. And if it's not, we are going to do our platform specific uh, customization here. So in addition to our element uh, property, we have which is our Xamarin Forms element, we have a control property, which is our native control here. In this case, it's a general UI view coming from UI Kit, and this is we're in iOS and iOS land. This is platform specific uh, for iOS here, and we have our layer property in our control, and then we have our corner radius uh, property. Again, this is iOS. And then for these properties, for we are going to go ahead and grab them from the effect. So we have our effect here in local variable, our shadow effect, and we set these properties, right? Radius, color, distance x, distance y. We can set them in Xamarin Forms, and we'll show you in just a moment. And here we'll just grab the radius and assign it here, this property, this um, iOS specific property. And we're going to grab our color again, but this is a, this is a Xamarin Forms color. So iOS has this nice extension method here to CG color, which converts a Xamarin Forms color to a CG color, which is an iOS. The shadow color here is a, it's in the core graphics um, uh, namespace here, it's a CG color. So we're going to just convert it. So we have the appropriate one here for iOS. And then we have our shadow offset. And you see shadow color, that's the name of the property in iOS. This is very platform specific here for iOS. And we have our shadow offset. So where is it going to be located? And for iOS, we need to bring in core graphics uh, here. And we pass as parameters just distance x and distance y, again, coming from our, from our effect here. Um, so this is just where the shadow is going to be located relative to the, to the control. So we have our color of our shadow, where it's going to be located, the radius, and then the opacity of the shadow. And we just have this property um, assigned to, to the, we have it assigned to this here. So we're ready um, on iOS. So let's go ahead. Oh, well, we're almost ready. We actually need one more thing. We need to, at the assembly level, we need to associate this, um, this effect to our button and register it. So I already have that here. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it. And we'll add it here and here I was working on my own app. So let's actually go ahead and write the name. And here in our base constructor for our shadow effect here, we have the string identifier. So this would be the resolution group name is this first one, this test app that we have here. So it matches. And here we have another assembly level attribute, which is called export effect, which is to register the effect, um, basically. And then we have, it an, we have an identifier called shadow effect. This is the second one here, shadow effect. So they match. Now here it's not this is the shadow the button shadow effect here in the in iOS, but it's not recognizing it because it's outside the namespace. It's at the assembly level. So we actually need to bring in um, this um, the namespace here. And so we're good. Our this is working on iOS now. It's ready to run. We're almost ready. We actually need to implement Xamarin Forms as well. But let's actually go ahead and do it on Android. Let's add new file here. Empty class, we'll call it the same, button shadow effect. And it's very nice that we can be consistent and name it the same way. And same thing, this needs to derive from platform effect. But since we're on Android now, this is going to come from a different namespace, as we see from the Xamarin Forms platform Android namespace. So very specific. And same thing, we need to implement our virtual methods here. So we have, again, same thing, the unattached and the undetached override, but now this is on Android specifically. And here, let's, talk, let's also bring in our attributes. Um, or oops. oops, there we go. Test app, same thing. Let's bring in the Xamarin Forms namespace. Let's bring in, and now we're, we're going to bring in the droid, the test app.android namespace, which is where we're at right now. So again, this is specific to Android, and when we did it before, this was very specific to iOS. So we have um, that registered at the assembly level. 
So now we need to implement the Android specific code here. And to save time, I've already, uh, I already have it here ready. Uh, let's go here. So we have on Android. So again, we have our element property, which is uh, the Xamarin Forms button. So we're good. And then again, we do the same check to be good developers. And then here we have our control property, which is the native control. And in this case, whereas in iOS, the, the control was different. It was, it was coming from, it was a UI kit UI view. Here we have a Android dot widget dot button. So this is very specific for Android. And Android, a button is a is a Android dot widget dot button. And on iOS, it's a UI button, actually. So it's, it's very different, very specific here. We need to bring in our effects here from our PCL and use link here to deal with collections. Um, so it's the same thing. We're grabbing the the effect, the shadow effect from the effects collection in the in our Xamarin Forms um, element here, and we'll see. And in just a moment, we'll add it, and we'll check if it's not null, and if it's not, we'll assign properties. So we have again grabbing from from our effect here these properties. We can go ahead and and, and grab them from our effect that we stored in a local variable. Same thing. Radius, distance x, distance y. Same thing as an iOS, but this is just an Android, just specifically. So on Android, how you implement shadow is you go into the control, which is your button, and, and you call the set shadow layer method here and takes four parameters here. So it takes a radius, just distance x, so where it's going to be positioned, and the color of the shadow. So it's very simple, again, how we implement this um, on Android. So, so we're almost ready. So we have our iOS implementation for our effect. We have our Android implementation for our effect. Now we actually need to add it to the effect collection of the button here in our PCL. So here in XAML, for our button, we go ahead and access our effects um, uh, property here, which is a collection of effects. And let's actually go ahead and close it out. Uh, there we go. And here we actually need to add a namespace, which I've already added here. I called it effects. We have an XML namespace. We call it effects. We can call it whatever we want. And it's in the test app dot effects, as we see here. So we're in test app effects, and that's where that shadow effects is. So here now we can go ahead and effects. See, that's our namespace, and that shadow effect already comes up. We have we have the reference here. Um, and here we add our properties. So we have a radius property. And we'll, we'll go ahead and set it to 5. We have our distance x. We'll also go ahead and set that to 5. Distance y, that will also be 5. And for color, let's just do black. And here, as you see, we are not setting these properties in the specific uh, um, effect classes in the, in the specific platforms, although we could. But here, it's very nice that we can actually do it in a cross-platform way and just once within the XAML in our XAML Forms portable class library here. Um, we set these properties. That's why it's very convenient um, to, to do this. Very flexible. You can We can do anything. We can also do that here specifically. Instead of grabbing it from the grabbing those from properties from the effect, we can just set them specifically if you want even more customization. But here, it's just to show you in this simple example how, how we do that. So we're ready to run. So let's go ahead and run it on iOS first. And here, a button. So we have that effect. And then on iOS, we'll go ahead and grab it from the effects collection. We'll store it. And then we'll go ahead and set our our properties here and then we should be able to see uh, this shadow on our UI button on iOS. So let's give it just a moment for it to come up. There it is. So we have our UI button, which is at runtime. Again, this is not a Xamarin Forms button at runtime. This is uh, this renders to a to a UI button on iOS. So, and we'll get we'll get into rendering in the next video. Actually, show you how how all that works. So we have our button effects button, and, and here you you see the shadow. Very beautiful. This would not be a, would not be possible in Xamarin Forms by itself. But in Xamarin Forms, we have the power to access the native APIs, the Xamarin iOS and the Xamarin Android native APIs, and do some platform-specific customization there. With the, um, so very, very powerful um, Xamarin Forms, very flexible. So stop running. Now we'll run it on Android. So we see what it looks like. And on Android, it should look different because this is this was implemented specifically on Android with the platform-specific um, um, here with the, the Android, Xamarin Android um, API here. So it's the effects are 
set and implemented differently in each platform. So we're, we're, we, we're, we should be able to see um, that shadow in a different way in Android, in a, in a platform specific way. Just give it just a moment here for Android to build. Yeah, typically Android sometimes it takes um, a little bit longer to build than iOS, but that's just uh, normal. I, I use uh, physical devices to to test uh, my application, to run them and to build. But here for this video, we're using these um, simulators um, and, and emulators here. So it's deploying, so just a moment. And it should be coming up on Android as well. It's installing the application, the device. And it's coming up now. So here we here we have our, our button, and as you can see here, this button this button the shadow was not added to the to the outside of the button. Um, that that's for iOS the the default implementation, but for for Android here, as you see, this effect is added to the text of the button itself. You you'll see it you see a silver shadow here, and actually here I had silver. Um, but what I can do here is I can just grab the, from the effect. We can I can just grab color, and Android also has an extension method here called to Android that converts a Xamarin Forms color to Android. So we'll stop running and we'll run it again, um, just so you see that 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 was that was just to show you that you don't actually have to grab that property from the effect. We can you can set your own um, property here. It's very very flexible. But here we'll do it just like in iOS. We'll just grab our effect, our a color, Xamarin Forms color, and use the extension method to convert it to an Android color here. So you can see that effect a little bit um, more. See, you see, since it's, since we set black here in, in, in XAML, that's what we're getting uh, for um, in Android here, and we can act, we can control that property and, and change it. But this is just to show you how you can use effects to customize um, visual elements in each platform using the platform specific APIs. And on Android here, this. Control and for widget for our Android widget button we have the set shadow layer and this is specific to Android and on iOS we have these um, layer these properties here that we set on the control uh, here which is actually UI view coming from UI kit and we set these um, these properties so again very specific to iOS this is iOS specific see it's in the Xamarin iOS assembly this CG size uh, class so yeah very 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 powerful. And we can combine Xamarin Forms with uh, with, na with native with the native uh, Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android to have complete control of our visual customization in our applications. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please leave them at the bottom. Also, please subscribe so you're the first to be notified. And I'll see you next time.